Hello and welcome to a new game from the CCC 11 event. I covered a couple of games from the qualification of this event and that one in the meantime ended and here are the final standings. Lilonstein won the event and then it's followed by Stockfish, Lila, Scorpio. Scorpio became very very strong lately. We have Dark Queen in fifth ethereal and rough shade so all these engines qualified for round one of the event and there they are joined by the other strong engines komodo houdini komodo mc fire and uh, stoveflays i think uh, these are all of them and today we have a game between lila and fire they played a modern defense the game started with e4 and now after g4, d4 and bishop g7 we have a Robach modern defense and here if white plays c4 then we can transpose into king's indian but in this one we have knight c3 and after d6 we have now bishop e3 a6 and after queen d2 we reach the end of the game and here white is uh, going for this setup with long castles and then an attack on the king side which is very very effective when uh, white has this control of the center with these two pawns and uh, black has a pawn on g6 it's much faster now for harry to engage this pawn on g6 and um, open the h file the game now continued with b5 this is fire's first move and here lila played f3 she's not fearing b4 here because b4 is a bit premature it would lose this pawn for fire here white's strongest move is knight d1 defending b2 and uh, allowing the knight to jump to b2 or c3 later as we'll see so here black's problem is now that this pawn is attacked <clears throat> and it's not so easy to defend black has to play a5 but now after a3 this pawn is attacked again and if pawn takes on a3 then after rook a3 there are two attackers now on a5 and as we can see black will lose this the uh, black will lose that pawn it's not so easy to defend it knight c6 doesn't work because of bishop b5 pinning the knight after bishop e7 white can just take him out and take on a5 and white wins a clear pawn instead of knight c6 uh, black can try c6 but now white has b4 and the spawn is pinned to the rook and the only way to save it is by playing a4 and now we can see that the knight can jump to c3 and white wins the pawn again so b4 is a bit premature instead we have knight d7 and now h4 lila launches this a hairy attack and especially that this knight is not an f6 to stop to guard the h5 square uh, h5 is very effective and if Lila gets in h5 then she's pretty much guaranteed to open the h file and castling kingside is very very dangerous so we have h5 here by fire stopping Harry on uh, the fourth square and now the game continues with knight h3 we are still following theory the knight goes to g5 bishop b7 and now knight g5 and this knight is very strong here it's not so easy to get rid of him because after f6 the knight can jump to e6 and attack the queen and the bishop so that wouldn't be good we have knight f6 now and here lila has to decide now how to continue the game there are two plans one of them is to play a4 and attack this pawn on b5 and make it either move forward or take on a4 after which white wins the c4 square for the bishop which uh, from c4 together with the knight could put the pressure on f7 this is one of the plans of course white castles short in this case the other plan is what lila chose to do and that is to castle long and continue with the king side attack and here now after long castles thanks to this uh, pressure on uh, on the d file lila is already threatening e5 and even e6 if allowed when uh, she would be attacking on f7 and if pawn takes then of course knight e6 again attacks queen and bishop that wouldn't be good so now we have e6 and this also allows queen e7 
And in this position, <clears throat> which appeared in a, in a couple of Super GM games, the main plans are either King B1, the main moves rather, King B1, prophylactic move, and G3. So these are the two moves that have been seen. Leela, however, went for novelty and played here A3. This has been played, but only at around 2200 ELU level. The game now continued with Queen E7, and now we have Bishop E2. The best place for this bishop, since uh, White wants to play G4, of course, and open the G and H files, this bishop is um, helping with that idea. And on E2, it also is not in the way of this battery of Queen and Rook. The game now continued with Rook D8. And in this position, G4 can be already played, but it's not that effective since black is not forced to take on g4. Black can just simply castle here, and after g takes on h5, recapture with the knight, and this knight is now stopping the h-pawn, and uh, white can't really open the h-file. And here white can play f4 maybe, and try to get rid of this knight, but now black is in time with counterplay by playing c5. And here white can take the knight, and after g takes on h5, also take on c5. And after pawn takes, play maybe queen e2 to, to get the h5 pawn. But now f6 is very, very strong here, pushing this knight back. The best square for the knight is on h3, but now fire can continue with b4, pushing this knight back, and slowly all the defenders of the e4 square are gone, and fire can now take on e4, and because he's attacking this rook on h1, white doesn't have time to take here, black also has queen f7 if needed, so we can see that black gets a lot of counterplay if g4 is played now, Lila is not in a hurry, she played here now knight h3, very good move, allowing the bishop to go to g5, now since fire aligned all these pieces so nicely on this diagonal, after bishop g5, the knight is pinned, and uh, fire won't be able to uh, to uh, take on h5 with the knight. He will pretty much be forced to take with the pawn, and then the g file opens up, and Lila can get attacking chances on the g file. So the game now continued with castles, and we have bishop g5, rook e8, and now g4 already works because, as I mentioned, because this knight is pinned. G takes uh, would be pretty much allow white to open the G file. So here, black would be forced to take on G4, but after F takes on G4, H5 will um, open the H file again. So this would be good for white, but Lila is not in a hurry. Instead, she played first queen E3, and only after queen F8, she played G4. When the knight is still pinned to this rook, we have H takes on G4, F takes on G4, and here Lila already... Uh, evaluates the position at plus one for white. The game continued with c5. Fire finally launches a counterattack, but we have h5, and after c takes on d4, rook takes, and uh, rook c8, we have now h takes on g5, f takes on g5. And the h file opened up, but this knight and this bishop are doing a good job in um, covering all these entry points on the h file. However, the f file also opened up, and Lila now played rook f1 to place this knight into a pin, and now we have queen e7, but the knight is still in a pin now because of the bishop, and this pin on this knight on f6 will be actually fire's downfall in this game. We have now king b1, a very very good move, a prophylactic move. When uh, white castles queen side, it's always a good idea to play king b1 because first of all the king gets out of a possible check on this diagonal this seems far-fetched right now with the queen and the bishop on this diagonal but in an ending uh, it, it could happen also the king now guards the a2 square so a queen cannot land there and give a check from a1 or maybe even a mate and thirdly the king is not on the semi-open c file now so this knight and the pawn are, uh, are not pinned to the king. So it's a very good move, accomplishes a lot of things. We now have knight c5 and rook back to d2, and now rook f8. It's very, very difficult for fire to get rid of this pin, 
We now have knight f2 intending to go e5 and knight e4 with more pressure on f6 and d6. Fire plate here now, rook f7. We have now e5 attacking the knight, pretty much forcing d takes on e5. But now suddenly Lila has a 3 2 2 majority here on the queen side, which means that she can create a passed pawn there. We now have knight e4, and since um, knight d6 is threatened, forking these rooks. Fire is pretty much forced to, to exchange those pieces. We have knight takes, bishop takes, and now in order to get back the piece, Lila also took on f6. We have rook takes and now queen takes on e4. And Lila is a pawn down, but her structure is much better. This mentioned she can create a passed pawn here. We have now rook takes on f1, bishop takes on f1, and now rook d8, since uh, in some cases rook d6 was threatened. Uh, attacking these pawns so we have fire challenging the d file but now we have rook d3 and here if fire exchanges the rooks then after bishop d6 this pawn is attacked on g6 which is um, not so easy to defend if black plays for example g5 here then queen a8 check is very strong after king f7 white can uh, win this pawn on a6 and then also the pawn on b5 and um, and white wins so instead of rook d3 we have first queen f6 attacking the bishop but now after bishop e2 the rook took anyway we have now bishop takes on d3 and how can fire uh, defend the spawn well if you play something like king h7 well this doesn't work because of queen h1 check forcing the king back or forcing the bishop to h6 and then lila can give a check either on b7 or on a8 and um, after king h7 now taking the pawn on a6 is not yet possible because of e4 and uh, mating of b2 but after c3 black's position is completely hopeless now these pawns will fall black can play maybe queen f4 here and, uh, and get the g4 pawn but there is a very very big difference between the pawn quality here they both have three pawns but these pawns can defend each other while these pawns are split and that means that thanks to the light square bishop lila can set up a, a light square blockade on this diagonal and that means that these pawns can't cross it they can defend each other as soon as those pawns go to e2 or g4 they will be captured and in the meantime lila's pawns can go up the board and help each other to promote so king h7 doesn't work we have queen g5 but now lila takes the g6 pawn queen takes bishop takes and lila's end game is, is pretty much winning here lila can create another pass pawn on the queen side she would have two outside pass pawns enough for a win the plan here for white is to play b5 and block these pawns on a light square and then play bishop e4 and and pick up these pawns we have bishop f6 now stopping g5, bishop e4 though, king f7, and now after b4 fixing those pawns, we have bishop d8. This allows the queen to come up the board and attack g4, but we have bishop e7, and after a5 we have bishop a6, and the b5 pawn is gone. We have a takes b, a takes b, and if now fire plays bishop e7, then simply just c3. We have king f6 and after bishop b5 and king g5 the bishop goes back to e2 in time to defend this pawn the black king became very active though and now we have king c1 and after king e3 king d1 lila preserves this bishop on the e2 square where um, it supports all the pawns we have now bishop e7 b5 bishop back and now c4 and here Fire is pretty much forced to go back with the king to d4, otherwise uh, these pawns just uh, just move up the board and white wins. We have now king c2, it's time to improve the king. And now after e4, king b3 would be a bit too soon. Lila has to be careful not to play king b3 because that would drop the win after king e3. This bishop is short on squares, uh, can go to here or here. And after something like bishop d1 the king can follow it and after king d2 white is in trouble for example bishop c2 already loses for um, for white because of e3 and uh, the bishop can't stop the pawn so here after uh, king e3 
best for uh, white is just to, to play c5 and push these pawns and that's only enough for a draw but why drop the win if it's not needed instead of um, here here after e4 instead of king b3 Lila just played bishop f1 removing the bishop from this attack and now we have e5 king b3 and the king has to go to c5 otherwise Lila goes to b4 with the king and pushes c5 we now have king a4 e3 and bishop e2 and black is pretty much in tuktuang this bishop has to stop this pawn and uh, the king has to stay on c5 but after e4 and bishop f1 now fire doesn't have a choice he can uh, give up this pawn but after uh, bishop back to f1 again avoiding this uh, trick and uh, king back we have now bishop g2 e3 bishop f1 and uh, now black has to make a move with the king playing e2 just drops a pawn for nothing and the problem is that if the king goes to, to b6 then uh, Lila's king will, will get to the king side and help this pawn go in and if the king goes to, to d4 then uh, Lila will find a way to a6 with the king and she will push b6 in the game we have king b6 and now after king b4 we have a check but c5 though bishop takes and now after king c4 you can see that Lila's king has a, a clear path to the king side while the black king can't really follow we have now bishop e7 again stopping this pawn king d4 attacking here bishop g5 king e4 king c5 now king f5 and now the g pawn goes forward and um, here we have king g5 king f8 and now king h6 intending king h7 and g7 so we have bishop f6 and fire has a dark square blockade on g7 but here comes now the b6 pawn making sure that the dark square bishop is busy we have now bishop e5 b7 bishop f4 check king a7 and now fire is out of options uh, one of these pawns will promote we have king e7 the king is running g7 bishop e5 and now we have a new queen e2 bishop takes bishop c7 now and after uh, lila promotes to a knight we have king d6 queen g7 bishop takes and now queen g3 check and lila picks up the bishop king d5 and now very very soon there will be a mate queen h2 check king e1 queen f4 king takes and here the black king is mated on f1 a very very nice king side attack by lila in the end i would like to thank to rene adolf mark gary guilherme sebastian todor and radu for their support Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other videos on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.